Click the links for Odyssey, bitch. You join the channel, become a member, which for channel, subscribe, start the various other uh, Gap TV and Telegram kind of things. So the short version is the pre is that Simon Pegg tries to gaslight the fans um, but by this nonsense diverse uh, diversity argument. European characters already are diverse. This is just anti-white hatred. Calling you toxic is how they manipulate you. Um, there's a kind of a Hegelian model to this if you want to assume that the goal all along was to uh, call you toxic is the phobes to kind of manipulate you to control the narrative. So they make these uh, race swaps and then they start straw manning this entire argument just to go after a fan base. Wanting to see the source material is not toxic. These people are just cultural Bolsheviks who are trying to manipulate entire crowds of people with brainwashing propaganda and even that term cultural bolshevism they say that term is istophobic because any term that correctly uh, calls them out they'll just say it's istophobic it's a it's amazing when you control the narrative when you control wikipedia you can just i mean you can you can list any group of people that are um, your ideological opposites and just call them istophobes go oh the adl splc aclu calls them a hate group you go, yeah, but aren't those groups hate groups? Oh, no, that's just a folk to say so. So you're saying you have complete and utter dominance of the narrative. Yeah, that's basically where we are with this. Um, no, wanting to stick to the source material does not, it does not make you a toxic customer. You're not a fan. You're a customer, and it, and it doesn't make you istophobic. The truth is, is not istophobic. Uh, in Russia, they used to call these wrong thinkers wreckers of progress. And it's like once you... Um, you de- the left wing will dehumanize anyone on the right by just calling using this nomenclature to take away their uh, their personhood, their agency by saying they're the opposite. <laughs> what is the uh, what is the dictionary? The dictionary just changed the definition of man and woman or male and female uh, to a circular uh, definition that like gee the, the snake really starts eating its tail. They go um, a man is or a male is just the opposite of a woman and a, a woman is the opposite of a male. It's like. You know, language used to matter. Words used to have definitions. It's, it's now not in this cultural uh, cultural Marxist world. Everything is just to push a narrative. Um, no, you're not toxic if you don't want to be brainwashed by the worst people on earth. Absolutely, these Bolshevik parasites. We want to see the original characters. We want to see how the artistic vision, um, the original artistic vision, how it how it blossomed into the fruit of this story. Uh, we want to see these original characters as as they are, not swapped at the last m- minute. That's a bait and switch. If you think you can create something new, then do it. Just write something fresh. But these people can't create because they're parasites who can only corrupt what other people have created, what other better storytellers have created. But that's the original story. The stories that they wanted to tell, it doesn't matter if it's Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, Star Trek, or any of these other stories. That's the original story. If you don't like it, you can't swap out the characters and expect people to be on board with it. Just try to create your own character. Write a book. Write a comic book. Make a fresh movie. If you if you really believe in uh, mostly African characters, they put African characters in everything for some reason. They never it's never they never swap in like uh, Asians or uh, Latin Americans. It's just specifically Africans. It's like okay, great, you want to tell that story? Fine, start with something. Start with something new. Tell I would start if I had you put a gun on my said, hey, I want, I want you to tell you tell a black story for a black audience. But like, all right, all right, fine. Let's uh, we'll, we'll 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 start with Shaka Zulu in Central Africa. That's a that's a good uh, the Maasai. And the Asai, that's a good story to tell. It's, there's a lot of a lot of fighting. You could put a lot of romance in there. There's a, they could fight each other. They could fight the Dutch. And and no, you can't tell the story like every every um, every fair skin character is a bad character. There's a lot of excitement to be told in a Central African story if you wanted to tell that story. It's like so why aren't they? Why don't you just t- roll the dice and try to create something new? I suspect a, Sh- a Shaka Zulu type of story would probably catch on pretty well, but. Like, they really legitimately do not want to tell a new story. They just want to take old stories that already have name recognition and do a bait and switch. It's like, oh, well, let's tell Shaka this Shaka Zulu story, like a Henry Ryder Haggard stories or something. You took those, but you swapped out um, the Maasai and you made them all look Swedish. You're like, 
this is insane. Why are you? Why, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're Swedish people running around Central Africa. This is a, this is the Maasai is now Swedish. Okay, well, this is just patently absurd. Yes, it's just as absurd when you do it the other way. Um, red hair and blonde haired Europeans are the most rare people on Earth. They're an ultra ultra minority. They are marginalized and oppressed. To swap out this ultra rare minority, these blue eyed, um, green eyed people. For something as common as a penny, no offense, that Hollywood is literally dehumanizing these ultra-rare minority European people with their racist, insane, race-swapping Hollywood movies. You, it, you should go the other way. You should swap out POCs who are the majority for European people who are the world's minority. Nobody ever really stops and says what I'm saying, like these really basic facts, because like they've been so brainwashed away from thinking in these terms, like majority and minority is like, no, no, you are you're 8% of the world's population. You are marginalized, oppressed and disenfranchised. Have you seen how you're treated in Hollywood? That's the definition of marginalized, oppressed and disenfranchised. Don't let them own these words. You can turn this this nomenclature around on them. Calling fans toxic is a recent and an interesting development in globalist propaganda. It's uh, it's how they um, how they control this narrative. But you know you can just uh, you can just completely reject their narrative. And, and if you do if you do reject their narrative, they lose their freaking minds, which is the, why they immediately deflect and just go to ad hominems to try to uh, put you in a box. A plot twist. They don't value diversity of thought after all. I am sick of seeing the original characters replaced. If you want to put Africans in every film and every comic book, why don't you just create something new with African origin characters? Most of these original characters are Europeans. That is who sold the story. Respect, or, you know, like I said, Henry Ryder, uh, Henry Ryder Haggard is a great guy. If you want to make a uh, great storyteller, if you want to make stories, he's got like a, dozens of books set um, all over the world, but a lot of them are set in Africa. And they were a very balanced telling of uh, African stories. And there's plenty of, uh, you could put plenty of African characters in his stories because most of the characters are African. And there's, there's, uh, there's good Africans and bad Africans and they're fighting each other. And if you made a movie like that nowadays, Hollywood just wouldn't make that movie. Where, um, who, who's, who's uh, Shaka's uh, sons? Um, what is it like, uh... Panda and Setiwayu were going to war with each other. It's like you're not gonna that, that that movie would probably do really really well in America, but Hollywood would never make a movie where um, uh, Panda and Setiwayu were going to war with each other because it's one black tribe against another black tribe, and there was no Dutch or English involvement. They were just kind of watching from the sidelines. It's like that movie would do really well. I guarantee you, a black audience would be pumped up to see that the film of Shaka Zulu's um, sons, you know, going to war in Central Africa. But they won't make that movie because there's not a white bad guy. That's as simple. That's as simple what it boils down to. Um, anyway, most of these original characters in in most modern stories that you're seeing were originally Europeans. That's who sold the story. Respect the artistic vision. This bait and switch stuff you see is just Frankfurt School cultural Bolshevism 101. And I think people are catching on to, to it. People are too politically correct to say what I am saying. Though even for that, people are slowly washing off this political correctness because they realize like the people who are pushing the cultural Bolshevism are evil people. I mean, like fundamentally, biblically evil people. They're so evil that it'll make a lot of atheist people or people who kind of fallen away from Christianity start to uh, go back to it a little bit because you realize like, oh, it does seem like there's like a biblical fight here against angels and demons. And you start thinking, oh, I'm, I'm way of all past, you know, the Abrahamic religion. And you start picking up your New Testament. And you're like, maybe there's something to this after all. Because it, it seems like the book of Revelation is, is somewhere on the horizon. Like it's foreseeable now in a way that it wasn't a decade ago. Anyway, but the, your brainwashing to not say all this politically incorrect stuff that I'm saying is also cultural Bolshevism. They have used the media to brainwash the viewer for a long time and if if you if you go against their narrative in any way shape or form immediately they will one ad hominem and two deflect they will not address you in the open marketplace of ideas they can't do it because fundamentally they they don't have a winning argument they don't have a decent argument so it's immediate ad hominem you're um 
something about you, your personality. It's like, well, you're not refuting the central tenet of the argument. It's not probative and relevant to uh, zealously advocate for your position. You're attacking the person who made the argument instead of the argument itself. It kind of makes me suspect that perhaps you can't refute the argument if you have to immediately deflect an ad hominem. Oh, well, you're just astophobe. Again, that's that's not addressing the argument. It's a, it's attacking the man, to the man, ad hominem. The story got popular because of the original cast of characters. European people are important and valid. They're awesome. And they're important to a story. James Bond is an Englishman driving a... Shit, what did he drive in? What did he drive in? Ah, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Wasn't it Jaguar? I forget what he was drawing, driving in the original books. Was it a Jaguar? Maybe it was a Jaguar. That's kind of a classic uh, English XKE or something. That the uh, what was that? The two door XKE with the um, was a four point two liter V twelve or something. Um, he is not an African. Humans are not fungible. European people, and then one I think the later James Bond movie they had him driving a BMW. It's like no, that's that. There's plenty of English cars. You can have them drive a, a Lotus or something. Um, humans are not fungible. European people matter. They are what made the story great in the first place. It's like a puzzle that fits together. You've got to fit the same pieces in there. The end result of the story is just the tip of the iceberg. Ian Fleming or George Lucas or J.R.R. Tolkien created this universe of a story built on you know, Lord um, Luke Skywalker, James Bond. The characters are what they are. They are important. It's not stunning and brave to substitute somebody else in their place. You're not updating something. You're Marxist anti-whites who destroy everything they touch. And it's not like we're saying, like I said, uh, oh, you just don't want to see Africans in stories. I could write you an African story, a black story, whatever you want to call it. It would be a fresh origin story. That's how you should do it. I wouldn't take a, a black I wouldn't take like I wouldn't take I, w- I wouldn't take what was the Henry Ryder's stories that were made into movies um, there was one made in the movie with Sharon Stone a long time ago it's, it's loosely what um, what uh, Steven Spielberg's movies Indiana Jones were kind of based on they're fantastic freaking stories you wouldn't take those stories and you wouldn't swap out um, English characters for black characters it wouldn't make any sense and you wouldn't take Black Panther and swap in you know uh some Russian guy for Black Panther. It's like, it wouldn't make any sense. Don't you respect Stan Lee and, and Jack Kirby's original story? No, apparently not. Um, we do. And, um, like, they do this bait-and-switch thing, and they don't understand. It's like, it's just... It's this huge iceberg of a universe of a story, and you're coming along at the very end of the finished product after all the work is done, and you go, oh, we'll just swap out, we'll just swap out this um, this character, and, and like nobody will notice. Like, yeah, but then the story kind of falls apart, as you've seen with some of these movies that have underperformed. It's not diversity because the original European characters are already diverse from each other. An Irishman is not an Englishman just because they have a similar skin tone any more than a, an Irishman is a, a Japanese or a, a South Korean just because they might have similar skin tones. They are diverse. Diversity just means European erasure, which is a problem because they are what made the stories great in the first place. Dear globalist parasites... Just create new characters. You can't because you're corrupt demons who can only destroy. Anyway, Simon Pegg, um, what an asshole he turned out to be. God, these people are just the worst people on earth. Um, calling fans toxic. How's that working out for you? That's a weird. That's a weird development. In it's only possible because suddenly these people are getting social media feedback in a way that they never got before. And they don't like it. They want a monologue, not a dialogue. They're very uncomfortable with being... I mean, before you could only vote with your wallet and just not see these movies. But now you can get on social media and say, yeah, we really don't want to see these characters swapped out. Oh, well, immediate ad hominem deflection. As opposed to saying, it's trying to explain, well, why you're swapping these characters out instead of just creating new characters. And why is it specifically African and, and not Chinese or Latin American? Uh, there's a bigger Mexican-American audience in America and worldwide. The Chinese audience is huge. If anything, you would swap... Instead of, like, they swap out um, blonde and red-haired characters for African characters, 
if I was thinking with the bottom line, I'd be swapping out for Chinese characters and sell the movies market to China or Mexico if I sell them to America because there's a big Mexican audience and I have them like sprinkle some Spanish in there. If I was just chasing the bottom line, it's like, but you're not. You're just specifically using Africans. It feels like, it feels like you're using black people as a shield. Oh, oh yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. They're just using them as a shield because they think that you're not going to criticize the whole topic. It's like, we're not criticizing the black actors who, and most of the time, are doing a fine job with the scripts they're handed. Like, I'm not, I would never criticize a black actor for taking a role. It's like, go get that money. Absolutely. I'm criticizing these parasites behind the scenes who are, who are doing this swapping out and thinking that you're not going to mention it because people are afraid for some reason. It's like, well, you're just going to have to move past that and start being honest and criticize these people. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys on the next episode.